Hello, welcome back. So, in this one we'll start setting up our character's interact functionality. Oh, and I went and got my, my gamepad so I can show you that they're both running around together. <laughs> but, alright, let's jump into it. And inside the player base blueprint, we don't want to do this in the player 1 or player 2 because then only that character will be able to do it. Since it's something we want both players to be able to do, we'll do it in the player base. Oh, I'm gonna. This is our update cam. I'm just gonna comment that out. And uh, there we go. All right. So down here, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to get an input event. Uh, instead of doing it this way, let's just. Let's go into our project settings and we'll actually set it up. So under the input in your project settings, let's add another action mapping. And this will be interact. What? Oh. <laughs> I clicked the wrong plus sign. All right, so this will be interact. And it's going to take two buttons, so one is going to be E on the keyboard, and jump is the, I'm using a PlayStation controller, so it's X. I'm going to make it so interact is the circle button, so face button right. So when you search up gamepad buttons, these face buttons are, for instance, on the PlayStation controller, X, circle, triangle, square, no wait, I did that wrong, <laughs> X, circle, square, triangle. So those are the face buttons. In order to get the D-pad, it's just D-pad. But I'm going to set this to gamepad face button right for the interact. I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to call my interact action event. And then over here, I'm going to create a function. So I'm going to add a function called interacting. Or inter yeah, interact works, because I didn't think it would work, because usually you can't have. Does it doesn't work. All right, cool. All right, so we need to tell it. Basically what we're going to do when we interact with something is we're going to fire a sphere trace out in front of the player that detects any objects in front of it that are of a certain variety. So in order to tell it what objects we want, let's go into our project settings one more time. And we are going to go to type in object and we can get object channels. So we want one new object channel and this is going to be called interact. Default response block is fine. And that's all we need there. So now in the viewport of our player base, highlighting the mesh, we can add a scene component called interact fire from. Instead of doing convoluted math to determine a point right here and then do it, we can just set this point and then fire it downwards. So I'm just going to put it right in front of the character and then in that interact event I'm going to get that fire from and then when we interact with something I want to do a sphere trace for objects. Where I want it to start is this interact fire from's world location and then where I want it to end is I'll take the world location and subtract from it. I'm going to subtract, let's try 150 to start, and for the radius I'm going to set it to 40 for now. And just to see if it's working the way I want it to look, I'm going to set the draw debug type to for duration. The current value object, oh it needs an object type, so right here on object types, let's just drag off and we can make an array of object types and we'll just get that interact. Oh, it probably helps if we actually, <laughs> in the event graph, plug in that interact function. 
to our interact input event. So that's looking not bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna move that interact fire from down a little bit though. I don't need it that high. That's looking fine. So my interact fire from is positioned at 60 on the Y and 150 on the Z, if you want to match it. And my radius is 40, negative 150 on the Z for my subtract. Since this is working, I'll go ahead and turn it back to none. So on the out hit, we want to break the hit result. We'll add a branch with a B left click. We will plug this in because this returns whether or not it interacted with something. And now we will just print a string. We will get player controller. Actually, you know what? Let's just print the player index that's interacting with stuff. So we'll get the player index and then plug it in right here. And then that way we can take a look and see. So let's, can we change this thing's object type? Collision presets, custom, and object type right there. So I'm gonna just change it to interact. So player zero is interacting. You can see it up in the top left. And if I jump in with this, ooh. My microphone was sliding away. So if I jump over here and press circle, now it's my now it says one. So the interact is working okay. We'll get rid of this. So what we wanted to do is to actually communicate with the object. So in order to do that, we need to set up some interaction interfacing. So we'll create a new folder, call it interaction double click and open that up and the first thing we're going to create here is a blueprint interface we will call this interact underscore BPI double click and open that up and we'll just call this very first function interact compile save and close oh actually wait let's uh we need to adjust this so it actually needs an input this time so let's add an input and this will be player index and it will be the integer because it will feed in our player index. Now we can save and close it. So now back in the player base when we get the hit actor we can just call that interact message so if it overlaps something we'll oh and the hit actor is valid so we need to get an is valid node. Then we'll call our interact message just as a failsafe. Then we'll feed in our player index. So we'll save everything real quick. I'm going to change this back to the default collision on that because we will right click create a blueprint class of an actor called Base interactable underscore BP and this will be what our items are based off of. So I'm going to double click and open it up. First thing I'm going to add over here is a static mesh which will be the item so we'll call it item and then you can set this to whatever you want for now generally for debugging I just put a cone and then scale it down so I'm going to set this to like 0.25 and then move it up. That's close enough. And then I'm going to add in the class settings, we'll add our interact BPI. Compile that. Save that. And then in the event graph, we can get rid of all this. We'll add event interact, which will let us get the event that we set up in our blueprint interface and then we will add a print string just to test it real quick and we'll do a from here we'll append and we will do player 
for the B, we'll just hook up our index right there and we'll add one right here that says interacted. Now the last thing that we will need to do is set up the collision. So on this item, we will come over to its collision settings and change its presets to custom and the object type to interact. That way it knows it's an interactable. I forgot to put one in the world. Player zero interacted. Player one interacted. Excellent. So now when we start telling this thing to move into inventories, we'll be able to tell it which character's inventory to move to. Let's see how long this one's going. All right, that's good for this one. That's not bad. Good base setup. I'm going to try to keep these shorter so that they're easier to go back through and find where you need. So, all right, in the next one, we will start establishing our character's inventory and getting things ready like that. So I will see you all soon. Bye.